Who is Smear really? And does he have any relation to the incorporeal clown, Mischief? That's what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> Don't you remember? The strong eat the weak, and the strong do eat. Even parasites. Hello, readers and digital people, and welcome back to GP Reads. I am your host, Squirrel Reads. I mean, Grant Reads. And this is Hootie's new baby brother, Gold Scoots. Hootie loves his baby brother. Eat your freaking snacks and stop hitting your brother. Anyway, today we are looking into one of my favorite creators of all time, Umami. Safe Mode, Episode 4, Temporary Paralysis. We'll be going through the symbology and all of those juicy lore bits. But before we begin, let's highlight a comment from the last video. CyberKatie6744 says, Hello, my friend. I love readers and digital people. And I love your hat. Thank you, Katie. The Exorcist, the first scary movie I ever watched. Really? I hear a lot of people say that, and I hear like it's like the scariest movie that ever existed, but I watched it the other day and it was good. It was really good, and the special effects were amazing for the time. But I really just didn't see it as that creepy. Is it the fact that maybe I've oversaturated myself with horror content, or is it maybe that as things have progressed, as special effects have progressed, it's just the older things don't seem as scary? I end up watching all of them. <laughs> and looking into the lore. And that's how I found out a lot about Pazuzu, actually. Thank you, Katie. Always a pleasure. All right, now back to the video. All right, so we're just coming off the foothills of the car crash. And what seems to be the man in blue, Henrik, floating by with a parachute and the mysterious reveal of the pink sun with Mischief's face on it. And focusing again on Mischief, this episode actually begins with us staring into the gaseous state, into these pink burning fumes of the simulated sun. And it says, the heat of a simulated sun, every particle accounted, mathematically traced, lines of binary as rays of light. Again, showing that everything here, even though it's simulated and it seems like a perfect life, it's not real. It's something manufactured. You just can't get that freedom, that beauty, that comes with true nature through this artificial world. And again, even if they did try to do this, the problem is, Mr. Greetings doesn't want free will. He doesn't want nature. He wants his perfected, cleansed, sterile state. Where everything's kind of brought to its limits. Everything's perfected. Nothing is natural, but everything's at its zenith, the maximum potential of what it could be. But the funny thing is, in doing that, you remove the soul. You're just making it a program, more or less an AI. But the main problem here is, you're removing the soul from a world filled with souls, from an afterlife that was designed for souls. It just doesn't make sense. And then we see that sunset, and we see a tank pulling up. It seems that a lot of issues that are linked with man are following through into this world. War, death, unrest. So is this really perfected then? Or is it just more controlled? And then we start to kind of see a breakdown of the sun itself, realizing it's not true particles, but it's all these hexagons and squares and triangles. And this could also be alluding to the shapes that Mischief uses. You know, Mischief transforms when he teleports. You'll see these shapes appear when he uses his powers. So again, this is probably alluding to him hiding in the sun or being in the system itself, being within the coding. And then as if on cue, it says the source code makes no reference to its death. In our mortal lives, the sun appeared constant and unending. And then it shows what appears to be a depiction of God reaching down to man, referencing the classic work of art, Ancient of Days, by English poet and painter William Blake. Again, that's kind of alluding to my theory from before, that Mischief is some kind of creation deity. When Mischief was born, so was this new world. It's like everything exploded forth from him. So if he's not some kind of deity, I feel like he became some kind of deity. The creator of this new world, so to speak. Following this imagery to an article about the Demiurge, Mischief seems to have become a reverse counterpart. Instead of bringing physicality to the world of spirits, he brought the spirits to the world of physicality. And the Demiurge is usually depicted as this giant serpentine dragon-like creature with a lion head. So could this giant serpentine creature with a clown head be its counterpart? I also find the symbolism to be too similar to be a coincidence. Mischief is often referenced by the sun or sunflowers. And according to information on the Demiurge, so is it. More on that in a later video. And as the scene pans down, it's revealed that he's reaching down towards the baby head deity thing as if trying to recover the trapped spirits within the interface, with what seems like crows or ravens circling around it. And crows, they can mean change, they can mean a struggle between good and evil, or they can also represent an omen of death. Then it says, and we stole from God death, in reference to the souls going to the interface instead of the afterlife. This digital world, this fake afterlife. And we've proven that peace is a temporary paralysis from reality. Even in a virtual reality, it can't be forced. And then you see Smear's brain pulsating, like he's receiving signals from the very creator of the universe himself. And again, this makes me think that maybe he's the brain of the interface. And he's picking up on what the interface is feeling in the outside world. So if you look at it this way, and Smear represents a Jesus-like character, at least the depiction of the Trinity through Jesus, as depicted by this anonymous painter. And Mischief represents a God-like character. Does that mean that Mischief created Smear? Or as I've theorized before, is Smear a culmination of all those body part spirits? 
like the octopus being the heart, the ghost being the hand, and so forth. Basically a deity born through spirits, like a son of spirits, so to speak. But of smears that combined soul of the interface, and Mischief created the world that was used to build the interface, that would make Mischief sort of his father figure, and the world of spirits would be like his mother. And then something else to notice here, again, the animals are pink. It's as if Mischief is controlling them, or he's synced up to them. And then Smear says, The desert is no place for a plant, especially one that requires constant hydration. Now he's talking about Snooze Button here, but I don't think he's talking about her specifically. I think he's talking about her soul. The souls need interaction, they need nature, they need each other. And they're completely deprived of that in this artificial world. Even though it looks like real life, it's clearly not. It's lacking that authenticity. Everyone's just kind of following the program. I mean, technically they still have free will, but they're having to follow these programs more and more so. And it's kind of ripping away their freedom. What makes them them? And then Samir says, I require hydration. Again, hinting that he's not just a program, but he has a soul. But the fact that he has multiple faces really makes me think that he's multiple spirits fused together. And again, we see Henrik flying by in his parachute. Or what seems to be Henrik, at least. Now, could it be that Mr. Greetings programmed a fake Henrik into this world, since he didn't have the true Henrik in the interface? Or could it be when he synced up with the interface that part of his soul actually entered the interface? I mean, we did see a whole bunch of Henriks floating around in the interface, so it makes me wonder. Maybe every time he rewinds, it creates another one. How many of those do you have in that jacket? They seem to just spontaneously appear. I don't have any ashtrays. And I know you're not one to litter. I'm old now. Like you should be. But I need to ask. When I join Mom, should we wait for you? Will you ever come? And then the kind of thoughts that Smear's having, well, they seem to have loaded the military. The interface does not like this particular thought pattern. And then again, Umami's wacky animation in this. <sighs> I love it. I mean, it's not real, it's a computer program, so you can move any way you want, I suppose. It actually reminds me a lot of the way that Mischief would move. I'd say he's definitely imprinted himself upon the interface and the people with them. And then he says, you're lucky to have me in your corner. A man with four eyes, one for each cardinal direction. And I feel like that's kind of in reference to the cherubim. Again, kind of being the sons of the deity. And then we see the reason behind Smear's design. Smear. Special Agent Smear. Here on official business. He functions as a sort of antivirus for the system, and that's why Greetings called upon him to handle the situation. And then when the man in the parachute lands, it definitely does look like Henrik. But this reminds me more so of the Henrik when he appeared out of nowhere, when he revealed himself to his wife. But my favorite one was when she told me the story about how you and her met. How you fell from the sky, when the skies were still blue. No plane in sight, just a man. Henrik the soldier, with his camera in tow. And don't you find that strange how all the military is kind of melting? They're more like wax figures than real people. False interpretations of something alive. And there's something that the military guy mentions here that I think will come into play later. He mentions that he looks like a double agent. You look like a, a double agent. <laughs> And I don't think that's just a play on the fact that he has multiple faces, because as we've seen as the series progresses, he's not really happy with the way that the world is developing. So could he actually maybe be working for mischief, or end up switching sides, turn coding, and becoming a double agent later on? Oh my gosh, those freaking eyes! Oh my gosh, those freaking eyes! And then we get another hint of the future, possibly, because then he says, I have three faces, which makes me a triple agent. So could he be acting like he's going with the rebellion, and then turn against them? And then what if he turns again? He really is kind of a wild card, isn't he? And then Smear escapes while they're blabbering on. And then he states, A contradiction. War in a land of immortality. Killing people in a land where you can't die, that is quite the conundrum there, isn't it? And that's the end of episode 4. We're really starting to see some of the flaws within the interface itself. How some of these systems are really just kind of tearing themselves apart. How Mischief's playing a part, how he's causing things to degrade. But the parts that he is making degrade are parts that really shouldn't exist in this world in the first place, when you think about it. It's almost like he's restoring this world to the natural way, the way it really should be. Because the world really shouldn't be in the afterlife. Because that kind of defeats the purpose. Why create an afterlife at all if it's just going to be the same thing? 
Or maybe even worse because there's less free will. Let me know what you all think about Umami's safe mode in the comments below. You can be featured at the beginning of the next video. And if you've already seen this series and you're a fan of Umami, I will be following the rest of the series and I will be having an explained video after I've finished. Like I did with Umami's interface. And remember to stick around for Hootie's joke after the credits. But until then, as always, keep your eyes wide open and never stop reading. I'll see you all. Thanks so much for watching. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons and channel members. Thanks to you, I'm able to do what I love. CNK114, Investigator Zeus, Dobby's Music, Jevra Mullins, Free Spirit Katie, Vexus, Agniska, Granny Monster, Nightmare Luna, Lily Ardad, and Elliot the Epic 242. Really, thank you so much for everything you do. It means the world to me. <clears throat> what does an owl with an attitude have? A sca owl. <laughs>